Okay. Yep. Go ahead. You ready? You're good. Father God, we just bless you this morning. We thank you. We praise your holy name. We know that you have called this class together. Father, we know that this is your will for this church, for this hour, for this moment. And Lord, we just ask that you fill our hearts with a hunger for you. We ask that you acknowledge what we are doing in the spiritual realm because we know that this is the answer to what you've called. You have called this forth. You have called this house forth to serve you, Father God. And you have called this class forth to teach those who have a heart to serve, how to serve, and how to walk in power and authority. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we, we are just so grateful for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We are so grateful to be together in this place today, Father. And we bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Good morning. The um, the way we're going to teach this this class, which is about prayer, is to take a look at the scriptures and what they say about prayer. It's going to take a while because because we have a lot of scriptures to go through. And if you give me you know some indication as to where I am time wise, because I'll just stay here for days. <laughs> so if you could. You know, follow along with me. I'm going to ask some of you to read for me. And um, I would like for this to be an interactive class. So do not hesitate to interrupt me. But when somebody interrupts me, you have to remind me where I was when I was interrupted. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is let's just go ahead and start with the part one commission with power and authority. Anyone can learn the mechanics of prayer. And some of these things I'm just going to read outright. Um, but if you learn the mechanics, then things will happen if you do this. It's like, it's like a mathematical equation. If this, then that. Or if the other thing, then that. Depends on what, you're, what you've got, what you're doing. And the mechanics are easy to learn. And we're going to talk about some of the mechanics of prayer. But without the mechanics, there's nothing. Excuse me, without, the, without the, the faith that drive the mechanics, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Mechanics in and of themselves give you an opportunity to understand the structure of prayer. But if you don't have the faith for prayer, nothing's going to happen. And in the years that I've been teaching, one of the things that I have noticed is that a lot of people excuse me, confuse faith with belief. And so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to kind of pull that apart. We're going to see what the difference is. Um, I remember, oh gosh, probably 20 years ago, a woman had come to me for prayer and I had said something to her and I said, it's, it's just don't get out of faith. And she was horribly offended. She was like, do you think I don't have the faith to do that? And I'm like, well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so what do you do with that? And that's when I kind of began this quest on how do I begin to teach someone how to pray? And so that's where we're at this morning. That's how, kind of how we, we started this because prayer is the most important thing we can do. Without prayer, there's nothing else. You know, without faith in prayer, there's, there's absolutely nothing. And it breaks my heart to see people say, I've been praying about it, praying about it, praying about it, and God just doesn't answer my prayer. Yeah, he does. But don't ask him for things that he's already given you. Don't ask him for things that he won't do. You know, a lot of people pray from a dare I say it, from a witchcraft position. Mm -hmm. They pray their will into this. I want this done. God, you do this. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what it takes to have an effective prayer life. And let's take a jump right in, right up to the ankles into the first parts of the scriptures. Alright, so... Mm -hmm. I've, um, 
I'll be adding things to it, so there'll be, you know, there'll be notes, additional notes. I may, at the end of this, send out a revised. I'm not, I, we'll see how it goes, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, one of the things that I know that God has, has really impressed upon me is the need to have the right scriptures for the right situation. Amen. Amen. Without understanding God's mind on a, on a circumstance, you can't understand how to pray. And if you can't understand how to pray, you're not going to get an answer to your prayer. I was in a, this is, and this is a true story, because trust me, like they say, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> um, I was in a prayer line. Um, I was ministering. And there was a, a man with me. Not, not with me. He was just, you know, somebody else from our church who was was also ministering in the line. And an individual came up and said, I, I have this problem with my knee. And this man said to him, oh, oh, I could I could pray, I'll lay hands on you and your knee will be better. And he laid hands on him. He says, Oh God, I just ask for you to take away his pain so that he doesn't feel whatever it is that's wrong. <laughs> And oh God, if he has to go to the doctor, please don't let it be cancer. Oh, oh God, please, bone, bone cancer's not good. Lord, don't let it be bone cancer. And Father, if he has to have surgery, please don't let them have to amputate his leg. He was calling all the things that weren't there. I was like, who are you? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He had absolutely no clue how to pray, but he thought he did. He was an elder in that church and didn't have a clue what was coming out of his mouth. And so most of what I teach, not only about prayer, but about life in general, is what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. What do you say? What happens when you talk? And that's what that little, I know that doesn't look quite much of a diagram, but what do you hear? Uh, it, it, it's what happens when we, when we speak. And so we're gonna, we're just gonna, you know, talk about all of that. What, what we say here in the, in the handout is, before we really start talking about prayer, we're gonna talk about our hearts and a bunch of other stuff. There's a, there are things, it, I think it's because we're in a fast food societal mentality that we think we could just start doing stuff without laying a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. Do you know, and the Bible says that you can't build a house yes. without laying that firm foundation. You can't build a house on the sand. Mm -hmm. And too much today in the, in the church realm is built on sand because nobody's taking the time mm -hmm. to yeah. actually build a foundation. Amen. And one of the things that that God has really been impressing upon me lately is the proverbial multitasking that we live with in this country. Oh, you can do that. Oh, but you can also do this because you're a multitasker. And you know what happens when we multitask? We lose sight of what we're what supposed we're to do. We lose quality of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We lose quantity of what we're doing. You know, I began to I began to realize this. I was on a special assignment doing some stuff out at the launch center. I was going over all of their technical policies and procedures, trying to make a determination as to whether or not they were accurate. And this is kind of what I didn't do for a living. And so what happened was. I, I got out there, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. I just go, you talk about the train of thought leaving, it just left the station. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back, though. It has to come back. It's probably going to go in the big circle. <laughs> but anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a determination of what it is we need to do. We're going to look at the policies and the procedures, as it were, that we find in, in the scripture Amen. on how to pray. But foundationally, we are going to take our time. We're not going to multitask. I'm sure what is multitasking? Out at the Space Center, I began to realize 
that people had certain jobs. You, you know what job descriptions are. But in addition to the job descriptions, we want you to go to this meeting. We want you to go to this meeting, and we want you to go to the oh, other meeting. Can you relate to that one, Carmen? Yep. And what happens then? They still then, do that. Of course. It's corporate. <laughs> what happens then is you lose sight of your primary goal. Mm -hmm. Multitasking takes you away from your primary goal. I don't care what they tell you. That's what happens. That's the result. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show you through this course how to be of that single mind that God talks about. He says you, you, you can't be double-minded. Mm -hmm. Another way of putting that is to, to multitask. You want to stay a single mind, but you can't do that without standing on that firm foundation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what the scriptures are, you don't have a firm foundation. Amen. Amen. I have an individual in, that I know um, in Seattle. He's, he's 50, just gave his life to the Lord a few months ago over the phone. And he's always saying, I don't know, how can I trust God? And I, my first question is, why don't you trust it in enough to think that now that you're saved, you're never going to burn in hell, right? Oh, well, yeah. But, but how can I trust him for this and that and all the other situations he's going through? And I said, well, have you, have you read the scriptures that I sent you? Well, no, but <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust someone you don't know. Mm -hmm. if, I were to, if I were to come up and say, John, my friend, I've got a check for $50,000. Now, he might kind of believe it because he knows me a little. If I came up to Kathy and said, Kathy, I've got a check for you for $50,000, she's going to look at me and she's going to go, yeah, right, because she knows me better than John knows me. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And so what happens is we kind of treat God the same way. We, we think we can trust him. And let me tell you, one of the things I love about Jesus is he's got this kind of this this subtle sarcasm at times. Mm -hmm. Like when he talks about salvation or healing. Well, what's easier to say? Mm -hmm. Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk. In other words, it's easy to believe something you can't see. Mm -hmm. But it's harder to believe the things that you can see, like enough money in your bank account, a healed leg. You know, so these are the things that we're going to learn about so that we can trust him for these things. And then we have to learn, once we've trusted him, how do we communicate with him? And it's like, it's like everything else. I mean, I watch, I watch Melissa and then I watch John and Carmen when, when we're having communion in church and they are one during that process. And they become one because of the fact that you're one in the spirit because you spend time together. You know, my son and his wife just celebrated the 27th wedding anniversary this, this week. And it's, they're strong because they spend time together. They tell the kids, you can't bother us for three days. We're going away. We're doing this. We're doing that. And, and of course, the kids are all full of growth. But they, they spend that time. They build that relationship. You can't have a relationship with God spending 15 minutes a day reading the Bible. You can't. Mm -hmm. Reading the Bible is an activity. It does not produce intimacy. You want an intimate relationship with God. And do you have to read the Bible to know how to do that? You have to know who he is. He is not going to sit here and quote all of this to you. You know, sometimes, but not all the time. So you may as well read it and wrote it down. It's his pleasure. <laughs> so we have to develop that intimate relationship. And we're going to talk so much about that, about the time that you have to spend with him in order to do it. If you if you only have five minutes a day, I know you guys have a little guy, you know, and if you've got five minutes a day and all you can do is pick up and read another song, do it. Ask God to bless it. Ask him to, to create that intimate relationship with you. God is not constrained by time. 
he is not constrained. You don't have to give him three hours. And when I talk about spending time with him, what I'm talking about is not